They don't want what we know out there. How a person can go from really almost nothing to becoming a millionaire by owning rental properties. He would always buy these flip houses, and I just remember thinking, this guy is crazy. Why would he buy that house? In the past decade, there's been a huge surge in the peer-to-peer short-term rental market. Become an insider. So you have to know the rules before you get the game. Every second counts. So make every second count. Welcome to the Real Estate Jam. Whether you're just beginning or the best of the best, we're glad you're here. We will share successes, failures, and strategies for the action-taking real estate investor. And now to your hosts, JD and Melissa. Hey guys, welcome to the Real Estate Jam podcast. I'm JD with my wonderful co-host. Hey Melissa, hey everybody. We are at Flip Packing Live 2021. We just concluded Flip Hacking Live 2021. Uh, there's still some stragglers hanging around here, um, but we wanted to come to the show today to tell you guys about the awesome experience we had, maybe some of the people that we got in touch with. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Melissa, you know, all of her uh, favorites, and, and we'll just kind of explain to you guys why we come every year and why we think that it's a benefit to uh, any aspiring real estate investor, and even the pros can get a lot of uh, good information out of it. I got this really cool hat out of it, the seven-figure altitude hat. Uh, I'm pretty uh, excited about it. looks like just my style. Um, no, I'm going to interview you. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, Go ahead, by all means, interview. So we had a fabulous time, um, and I just wanted us to recap some of it, so I wanted J.D. to talk about uh, the highlights from each day, if you could do that. Well, right. Yeah, I will definitely do, do the highlights of each day. And what, what our original intention with this podcast was, was to write down a list of all of the speakers that we saw and which ones had valuable information. And we were just going to go through that. Well, we started writing the list and going through and, and going through the program, looking at everybody was there. And we just got too many. I got two pages worth of uh speakers written down and there's no possible way that we could uh go over everything so i just want to tell you guys that uh if if you get the chance get in buy your tickets this year uh for for next year they're going to be live here in a couple of days and they're going to be cheaper now than they are towards the end of the year um and if you can get in get your tickets it, it is truly an amazing event and i'm not going to be able to go through everybody we're not going to be able to go into the details of each pitch um or each presentation, but, but it is super valuable. And, uh, I just wish I had, uh, you know, the ability to go through each and every one. We're just not going to be able to, there's, I have a list of tons of people on there. Um, and let's just do it. Okay. (laughs) Let's go. Okay. So, um, it's Bill Allen's event. Yeah, it is. It is Bill Allen's event. He spoke a couple of different times and had some really good uh, presentations on overcoming adversity. He kind of went through uh, the Walt Disney struggle and how he ended up being successful, but he had hit so many roadblocks on the way. I thought that was really good. Uh, he continued to talk about success in some of his other um, presentations. And man, I can't say enough about that dude. He, every, every single person that got up on stage to talk about or, or mention him, you know, they were just so grateful and filled with gratitude towards the help that he'd been able to provide them. I don't think I know anybody that's ever said a bad word about him. Um, Melissa, do you know what your, your favorite presentation was? Do you remember your favorite? Yeah, I loved everybody, um, but some of them resonated more with me based on where we are with our business. So like day one, of course, Adam was fabulous, Adam Whitney. So he talked about cold calling and how to do that better and uh, talked about some systems that we had no idea about, even though we've been doing it, you know, for three years. So he was awesome. And then also Val was terrific because she talked about um, getting your cold callers, um, how to, how they can do that better. It gave so many examples and uh, that we're going to implement for sure. Um, yeah. Those are mine. Okay. I, I think that's great. I think those are, are really really good ones as far as adam stuff you know he, he was up there sharing some of the cold calling stuff like like melissa said that we we never uh, got into and one thing that i want to say is like um i think uh, at least three of the speakers that were on stage have been on our podcast before and that we know them have a personal relationship with them and i think that's pretty amazing uh adam dave from military to millionaire bill allen 
Uh, I'm not sure if we had anybody else on there. Uh, uh, um, you know, we did have uh, REI SIFT put on a, a uh, presentation, Tyler from REI SIFT. We haven't That's had him great. on yet, no. uh, but he's over there in our market. We had one of his guys come on at one point. Um, but w with Adam, man, I think it, it, everybody loved it. His was one of the first, I think, first or second uh, real uh, content oriented pre presentations and he did a really good job of breaking it down kind of how his system is and I, I took away a couple of different things one how to make sure that our cold calling phone numbers don't get uh, marked as spam we're, we're going to implement that immediately that great. how to get discounts thanks Adam <laughs> yeah thanks Adam <laughs> how we're going we're to get discounts on uh, the numbers that we're buying for our cold callers um, and then the other thing um that he spoke about that I really liked was his KPIs for his cold callers. And we've been tracking our KPIs, but doing a little bit different. I think we're going to start to implement his, uh, some of his standard for, for our, our cold callers. So I really took away a lot from Adam's, Adam's stuff. I think it's good. I also think it's great because he's a dude in, in our market that we're working with, uh, especially you, Melissa, that you're working with. And I think it was awesome to see him up on stage, giving away the, all the goods. Um, uh, oh, okay. And then Val, I thought Val was one of my favorites, uh, too. She has been there for the last three. Yeah. Three, every three, three years. Two, Well, yeah, three, three years ago. I don't know if she, I can't remember if she was there last year, but every time she speaks, it's, it's absolutely gold. And, uh, I think, and, and she, she's starting a program where she's helping train, uh, virtual assistants and, and lead intake. It really is what it is. Um, and her, the biggest takeaway I had from her was conversations lead to conversion. And so oftentimes, especially when we're using virtual assistants, we just have them go through the list. They're not actually asking questions. They're not displaying any empathy. They're not connecting. Connection equals conversion. Conversations equal conversion. They're not really connecting with it. And she put a lot of emphasis on the connection. She, she, uh, shared her scripts. She shared the, but she, really what she shared was the mindset that she has when she's having these phone calls or the way that she's training it um, to these people. And and as soon as we get back to the office, we're going to start implementing her yeah. training program for our virtual assistants because I think that she, that it's just invaluable the yeah. way that they're thinking about those conversations and the way that. Uh, there's a training system that we can just pluck our, yeah. pick up RVAs and put them in that system yeah, so they can understand that. it. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. that's huge. Was there any other, other, other guys that you really liked? Um, I, I liked Ryan a lot. Uh, some of the stuff that we learned before from him, we're implementing about, um, you know, just things that you can get for free to. to Ryan, Ryan with. Smith. Yeah. Uh, he has a company too. I can't remember. Lead uh, Smith. Oh yeah. Lead Smith with Ryan Smith. And, yeah. and I mean, he is a, a niche list marketing mm -hmm. genius yeah. and he, he sells, um, this, the stuff that he taught on stage for, for, uh, a lot of money to other investors. We even looked at uh, hiring it, but then he came and, and taught us exactly the stuff that he's done. Some of the things that we learned in the past that we implemented uh, are, are producing good results for us. And I think some of the things that he spoke about, I took most notes from his page. Um, really what it all comes down to, the secret is getting into your government websites that are for your town or your county or your location and really becoming an expert on those on what kind of information you can pull and how you can navigate around that i think we're gonna i mean we're already implementing a lot of his stuff yeah. with results and the funny thing is i was telling melissa about uh this morning was that when we go back and look at some of the other deals that we have if I go back and, and I can trace it back to a list, not, not that we are marketing to it, um, I can trace it back to it where it would have been on the one of the lists that he told me to pull, um, but we, we just didn't go back that far in time. We only, we only went back six months. If we would have went back a year and a half, you know, multiple deals that we've closed this year would have been on that list. And, and that's just kind of like retroactive Monday morning quarterback type proof that it, it works right. And so there's no, no doubt that the things that he taught us uh, this time are going to produce leads for us in the future. That's huge. Yeah. And so all of these people have um, helped us in the past 
get more successful. And then from this one, we will too. And then the other thing that I wanted to add, JD, thanks for asking, is about the relationships because that is so important. That's probably the most important thing of all of this in these events is just the relationships that you build and people that you might go in and have deals with, um, you know, like Adam and then we met some other people that we uh, we get deals for and to meet everybody in person is super great. Well, I, I, I think they said it from stage, but I also felt like, you know, we've been coming here, coming to this event since it was in San Diego in 2019 for the last, this was our third, third time coming last year was virtual. Uh, but it really did kind of feel like a family reunion. Like we walked in, we saw a ton of people from our market. We saw people that we've been interacting in different groups with or that we've had conversations with. Or deals with. Or deals with mm-hmm. for, for, for years, cool. literally years. And getting to see everybody, it was it was walking into a, a, you know, a high school reunion or a family reunion where everybody, yeah. you know, hey, hi, Melissa. Hey, how's it going? I miss you guys. How are you doing? And, and let's just, go have drinks. Yeah, let's yeah, go have let's drinks. Yeah, let's do that. That's fun. <laughs> That is super fun. Uh, I think I think that uh, getting to socialize with these people who are going through the same kind of things that you're going through, that maybe have advice that, that you can pick up on, or um, when you have advice that you can help them out uh, with the different things, I think it's huge. And, and just feeling the support of a community like that it, it is pretty awesome. And, you know, even if all we did was, um, you know, sit in a conference or, 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 uh, I don't know, write, uh, love me letters all, all weekend. It still would have been worth it just to meet up with all of these yeah. people that we've been doing business with for, and uh, here's somebody right here. Hi Becca. Yeah. We were doing our, our live podcast. Well, it's not live, but, uh, we're on a podcast. And she was awesome. Awesome. I'm in my towel because I was resting and relaxing after this amazing <laughs> event. It was so great. <laughs> it was an epic day. Yes. An epic three days. It was. Oh, sure. still awake. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thank you. You. <laughs> um, well, it's great. Um, Wait, so I just wanted to say one thing. Okay, please. So I wanted to ask you, because I know we're pushing up against time, about what you um talked about and also about dave dave from military millionaire he talked about having a w-2 job and still doing it which a lot of people here are for sure and how to make that happen yeah uh, dave's information was great you know i i think that he took the um information that he has about the military and why the military is is a uh, good uh, place for you to start your investing career and applied that just like it would normally be to W-2 job and, and spoke about, you know, if you get the right systems and processes in place, you hire the right help that you're able to uh, scale your business, grow your business and do great things, even though you work your W-2 job or even though you're in the military. Yeah. And a lot of his message that he's been speaking for the last few years, you know, since we first met him to uh, military members is directly applicable to the uh, regular W-2 income earner and, and their, uh, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, uh, I don't have enough, I don't know enough people. Uh, those are all excuses that limit people. Those are limiting beliefs that we impose on ourselves uh, that stop us from being successful. He was essentially locked in a fault with no access to, uh, you know, public internet, no access to his phone. Uh, and he, he literally six times or or 10 times his uh, rental portfolio in the last two years and was able to to leave his job. As a matter of fact, we even had a a guy uh, during this event come up on stage and quit his job. Melissa was a little bit scared for him. His job at Apple. He had a great job. I was just super nervous His job at Apple, he quit it live on stage. I hope you didn't regret that today. Um, Also, Walter Bond, even though I've heard him speak, this was the third time. Um, yeah. it resonated more this time with me. I'm not sure why, but it did. It did. It did with me too. I think, um, that Walter won, he, he's a hall of fame, uh, motivational speaker, which, uh, that's pretty amazing. So he's, you're, you're, he's always going to do a good job, but his message was pretty tailored to our community this time. I think this is the third time that I've heard him speak at the flip acting live event. And I think by now, you know, he, he has a, He's learned the audience and yeah. and really you know, connects directly with uh, a lot of the people in there. People in the audience were crying after he was done speaking. Um, not Melissa. Crying. Melissa's not a crier. Um, I'm a crier. Melissa's not a crier. But uh, JD had to wipe his tears. I was just 
bawling. No, I wasn't crying, but uh, there was a lot of uh, motivation. <laughs> there was a lot of motivation, a lot of uh, uh, just get up and do it. You know, his mission or his. Go get it. Yeah, be sweet, baby. Go get it. It was that uh, the reason that he was successful today is because of his coaches and his mentors, mainly being his um, mother and father, and and uh, really taking the time to instill that. If you're trying to create this legacy, this legacy wealth through the businesses that you're doing, that you need to come come to work, show up every day to be successful. But you also need to impart that onto your kids and your family and the people you surround yourself with and if you don't have a, a, a set of core principles to live by that, that you're teaching and instilling in the people around you then you're doing something wrong and missing out on a lot of it that's good what else did you like and you know i was a super uh super big fan of nate and riley um, oh yeah i thought that was that great was really good and um nate and riley uh kind of a father daughter flipper uh, team. Uh, Riley's like 13 years old. 15. 15, 15 she's years old. It. She's been doing it for um, years and years. They're partners uh, in their business. Uh, the dad, Nate, started dragging her around when she was just little, letting her paint on the walls like he was doing the rest of the um, flip. And then eventually she's taking on more and more responsibility. She shared, you know, what she's doing, how she's still able to be a kid, but cool. she's also taking on um, the responsibilities of the business. She mentioned that the thing that really got her to kind of unlock that, that wheel was uh, rich, uh, reading a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad for Teens, and that that really helped her, which is crazy because all the real investors that I know, uh, the thing that helped them was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, yeah. the original. And, and to see that, that, that there's a book for teenagers out there, I think I'll definitely start getting my kids to read it as soon as they're available. Yeah. Uh, I think that's cool, too, because, you know, that's way um, with, with some of our early uh, flips, that's what I had JD do, and Logan was too little to do it. But uh, I, I would look forward to making them. I can't wait until they're 16 and they can mow the lawn for us so I don't have to pay somebody a hundred bucks. But... I want them to drive for dollars. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's right. Then we also had uh, Vaughn. Oh, yeah. About driving for dollars. Man, there, there's just so many it's people many that, people. that did. But yeah. another one that was huge was uh, Vaughn Bethel talked about uh, his program. His entire marketing strategy essentially is built off of uh, driving for dollars and he has this whole pay structure where he's getting people to go out and drive for dollars. He's paying them $1 per property based off of if that property meets the criteria. Uh, they're skip tracing. They're using the Dragon for Dollars app in a way that me and Melissa have never even thought of or heard of or knew that was possible yeah. to do. And, and now uh, the drivers are going out, pulling in. You know, I don't know how many leads he said, but he's getting leads at a dollar a lead. We're paying forty-seven dollars a lead right now, so it just makes sense yeah. that you you would implement something like that. And uh, and they can send the postcards out right, right then. there, so they're going out that night, which is great. Yeah, it's it's huge. There's a whole system behind mm -hmm. it, and uh, it's a little bit. It's not even complicated. It's a simple system, uh, and his whole business is worked on off of that. You yeah. know, we always say that Dragon for Dollars is one of the best. Uh, lead sources out there because you find these distressed properties with the deal machine app you can you can qualify them uh, on paper first through through different uh, means and then send your driving for dollar guys out there to take a picture of those properties that are already qualified and if if it works you know they get a, a bonus if the deal closes they get yeah, a bonus just cool um, like that but they're actual employees and they're going, they're going through in, and uh, that's a lot different than the way we had looked at it before where we weren't paying people unless they closed the deal. Yeah. So it didn't really give them any incentive to stay with us. They do it for a couple of weeks. And since it takes 90 days, sometimes to close the deal, we weren't, you know, they were. But he put some time into it where, you know, deals that are properties that are not leads, there's not credit for those. Right. And then there's a cap. So it's not like somebody could spend, you know, do 400, houses or something there's mm -hmm. a cap a weekly cap which is cool yeah i really like that yeah. program um, we're gonna have to get the video recordings of uh flip hacking live mm -hmm. so we can go back and implement these as we have time there's just well, our goal is just to implement one thing and then once that one thing's implemented implement the next thing right. because if you try to implement all of this at once there's no way you're gonna be able it's to overwhelming it. yeah sure. there's so much we took so notes all day today about what we were going to do and the process of how we were going to implement each thing yeah it was pretty uh pretty amazing i think 
I had a good experience. Well, listen, would you would you come back to one of these? Are you going to be oh, back yeah. here next year? Every year, yeah, always, yeah. yeah. I think so too. We it's, try to bring somebody with us every time. So this year we bought our mentee, yeah, Christian, Christian, who's awesome, and he was just super thankful we brought him. And then one of the guys that JD invited two years ago, we saw again today because mm-hmm. last year it was virtual. And he was just so indebted to JD and so grateful and said how he had changed his life. And it was just like man crush. And it was just really, it was very <laughs> yeah, that's, nice. That's Andy. We're going to try to get him on the yeah. podcast one of, one of these days. But he was he was just starting out. He was a military guy uh, since, since uh, we met with him, talked about real estate with him. Um, Got him to convince him to come to um, Flip Hacking Live. He came. He uh, joined one of their programs. He was in their program the last two years um, and ended up quitting. You know, not quitting, but he, he separated from the military. Him and his wife were both uh, officers in the military. And because of that, they both separated and started doing real estate investing full time. Uh, moved back to Texas, where he's from, uh, and, and started doing um real estate full-time. And, and that's amazing. He, he was able to change his life um, through real estate. And I think, you know, and it Christian's going to so do that too. We're oh, yeah. really excited to help Tim along. So I would just say, make sure you come and make sure you bring somebody because it right. will change their life. And if you, if you hang out long enough in, in that environment, that crowd, after you buy your ticket, they'll give you a chance to get a free ticket to give to somebody else. You don't always have to come out of pocket with it as long as they can get to the location and, and pay for the hotel or you guys share a hotel room. You can get there. I would just watch throughout the year because they do specials. There's different groups you can sign up with where you can get these free tickets. And, and, and even if it wasn't free, even if it was a thousand dollars a ticket, it's still probably worth it. I will say though, we didn't get the VIP ticket this year. And I, I will definitely to, get the. I said, JD, let's get, get the, the VIP, VIP ticket. ticket. And then I said again the other day, JD, let's get the VIP ticket. He goes, no, I no, just couldn't justify no. it, but I really think that we should have. I should have just um, done it. We'll talk about it next year. So I regret not getting it just because with the VIP ticket, the only reason is I like to be first into the auditorium so you can pick your own seat, get a seat up front so that I can take better notes and pay attention better. That's the only reason. Well, I like it for the Q and A and the other other relationship building. I'm sorry, that's not the type of thing. Well, I don't like waiting in line. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, I think it was really good. I'm really glad that you got to come with me. I'm glad we got to go together so and awesome. spend some time with some of our friends, some of the people we haven't seen before, and learn a whole lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's about all I got. What do you got? Make sure you get here next year. Ask us how. We'll help you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we'll help you get here. All right, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to The Real Estate Jam. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information, check out our website, therealestatejam.com, or find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Real Estate Jam. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at therealestatejam at gmail.com. See you next episode.